The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. 1 John chapter 5, verse 8, And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree as one. The Holy Scriptures precisely mention the three witnesses as, quote, the three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree as one. Let us look at each individual witness. One, the Holy Spirit. And first, the Holy Spirit is witness at this hour that Jesus is the Son of God and Jesus is God. John chapter 15, verse 26. But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. Quote, he will bear witness about me. The Holy Spirit resonates within the hearts of every believer, bearing witness to the profound truth of Lord Jesus Christ. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, we would never be able to even slightly comprehend God in his glory and his majesty. Without the Holy Spirit, we would never be able to have a relationship with God the Father that we have today. For God dwells in a place which no eye has seen. He dwells in a place beyond human comprehension and human understanding. He is beyond all that has existed from age to age, from century to century. Before there was anything, He was there. In eternity past, He was there. Before the world existed, He was there. Before the formation of time itself, He was there. Before the creation of Michael, Gabriel, and all of the angels, He was there. The eternal self-existing One, Almighty, all-knowing, everlasting, Creator, who dwells in a place of holiness that the human mind cannot comprehend, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. He dwells in light that no man can see, in a holiness that you cannot see. You cannot come to know God without the Holy Spirit. My friends, I need you to understand the pivotal role of the Holy Spirit in your life. He is the one who brings you to know Jesus Christ. John 15, 26, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. This is Jesus Christ speaking. The Holy Spirit will testify of Christ. The Holy Spirit will point to Christ, for Jesus Christ is the one and only way to the Father. You cannot get to the Father without coming through Jesus Christ. He is the only way to the Father. Matthew 11, 27. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. God is not on your level. God is so far above us. He has existed from everlasting to everlasting. Get your mind around that fact. Before there was anything at all, he was there. He didn't need anything to exist. He is existence itself. You, on the other hand, need air to breathe. You need eyes to see. You need a place to sleep and rest. However, this eternal almighty being doesn't. He neither sleeps nor slumbers. He is large and in charge. He is the CEO of the whole universe. He is the boss of microorganisms and atoms. The earth is his footstool. Winds and waves obey him. Lightning flashes at his command. And the people of this earth forget. He is the giver of life. The people of this earth forget. He literally holds their life in his hands. The people of this earth forget how quickly and suddenly the judgment of God can come upon a person's life. Ananias and Sapphira. This husband and wife duo lied about the amount of money they received from selling a piece of property and pretended to donate all the proceeds to the early Christian community. God struck them dead as a result of their deceit. Sudden judgment. The Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, is on this, and he reveals Jesus Christ to us. Look at the way you love Jesus Christ. He is your heartbeat, your everything. That is not a natural love. It is a love that comes from the Holy Spirit. Look at how excited you are to one day see him. Look how much you look forward to walking into heaven, that there is the work of the Holy Spirit. Look how you look forward to heaven. Look how your desires are different from the people of this world. That is not natural. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. Love him 
and do not grieve the Spirit. Live a holy life each day and know your body is a temple of the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit reiterates that Jesus Christ is the one and only way to the Father. The Holy Spirit, my friend, is the one that reveals the Lord Jesus Christ to believers. While I never have physically seen the Lord Jesus Christ, his presence feels more palpable to me than even the air that I breathe. Even though I have never visited heaven or dwelt within its realms, its reality is more profound to me than the tangible world in which I currently reside. This remarkable perception is only possible because the Spirit of God testifies to the reality of Jesus Christ in the scriptures. We must remember, you and I were not witnesses to Christ's earthly ministry. We were not present at his baptism nor were we spectators at his crucifixion, yet the Holy Spirit was there. Today, the Holy Spirit remains the only entity actively present on earth that witnessed Jesus Christ's ministry firsthand. Romans chapter 8, verses 15 through 16. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. His witnesses our inner confidence that we belong to Christ. To know God is my Father. Assurance. To know God is my Savior. Assurance. To know God is my Redeemer. Assurance. My friend, it is the Holy Spirit that bestows upon you the assurance of knowing your ultimate destination after death. This divine clarity is absent in the hearts of unbelievers and the unconverted, but you, as a child of God, have been granted this assurance, this conviction. Just like David, you need not fear death. David was privy to his eternal destiny long before his earthly demise. He held a clear understanding of where he would go after he died. This very same assurance is what you, as a child of God, are privileged to receive. Psalm 23, verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Abraham knew where he was going. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10. For he was awaiting the city having foundations, of which the architect and builder is God. Jesus knew where he was going. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 2. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Heaven, it echoes the truth within our spirits that we are indeed the children of God. Unbelievers may find themselves tormented by the uncertainty of what follows this life. However, you rest peacefully at night, cradled in the peace of God only the Holy Spirit can provide. With the affirming knowledge, I am a child of God. This divine assurance reinforces the fact that God is your Father, a relationship established through spiritual rebirth. You have been born from above, graced with a new life that transcends earthly existence. This intimate connection to the divine is a gift of the Holy Spirit, fostering in your heart a sense of profound peace and security. Two, the water as second witness. The water witnesses. CHS states the following on water as the witness. Not the water of baptism, but the new life implanted in Christians, for that is the sense in which John's master had used the word Quote, water. The water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up unto everlasting life. Where the Spirit of God comes, he creates in the man a new nature, pure, bright, fresh, vigorous, like a fountain. And the fact that this new nature does exist in multitudes of men is a standing evidence that the gospel is true. For no other religion makes men new creatures. No other religion even pretends to do it. They may propose to improve the old nature, but none of them can say, Behold, I make all things new. Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. For Christians, death is not an end, but a gateway to eternal life. We are not a people shadowed by death. We are not dead people. We do not celebrate death. We are not burdened by the anxiety of mortality. For we live by the word of God, which reassures us, quote, he that believeth in me, 
shall never die. What does this potent proclamation signify? It communicates a profound truth. As believers, we need not fear death. Those who entrust their faith in Jesus Christ will never taste the bitterness of eternal death. They shall never be engulfed by its dark abyss. Death cannot claim them as its victims, nor stalk them as a relentless predator. For we live by the word of God, which reassures us, quote, he that believeth in me shall never die. Our faith in Jesus Christ equips us with a life that cannot be snuffed out, a spiritual existence that transcends the fragility of the physical. Why? Because the Prince of Life, Jesus Christ himself, has shattered the chains of death. He has triumphed over mortality, establishing an eternal kingdom where death holds no dominion. In this victory, believers find their faith fortified, their spirits invigorated, and their fear of death is dissolved. 3. The blood as a witness. The third abiding witness is the blood. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. The blood of Jesus Christ bears a potent witness to our redemption. It is by this sacred blood that your forgiveness, my forgiveness, and the forgiveness of all believers has been realized. Without the shedding of his blood, there can be no remission of sins. Consider the undefiled blood of the Lord Jesus Christ a life essence of divine purity. This is the blood that holds the power to erase the stain of sin, washing away our transgressions and misdeeds. The undefiled blood of Jesus, purifying us from all sins and renewing our spiritual identity. Moreover, the undefiled blood of Jesus instills a profound fear in every demon of hell. Its divine potency, its unblemished sanctity, and its unmatched authority is a formidable force that the forces of darkness dare not challenge. This blood, pure and powerful, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. The blood of Jesus Christ counteracts Satan's accusations against us. These allegations hold no weight, for Jesus has already paid the penalty of our sins deserved. Even if we are more flawed than Satan's accusations suggest, we are nonetheless made righteous by the redemptive work of Jesus on the cross. Our understanding, our realization, our concentration, our focus is on the death of Jesus on the cross as our substitute and is the true score of victory in our spiritual battles. Our focus on Christ's sacrificial act, his selfless death as our substitute, is what empowers us, what shields us against the devil's attacks. It is not about merely uttering the words. It's about genuinely understanding and internalizing what Jesus' sacrifice on the cross truly means for us. That comprehension is our greatest weapon and our most potent defense. You and I are not going to heaven because of anything we have done. You are going to heaven because of what he did. It's not about you, it's about him. Jesus Christ, salvation, eternal life, eternity as a person, the person, the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 53 verse five, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes, we are healed. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish.